and again, hi everyone. Uh, I am Ellie Papadopoulou from Athena Research Center. I don't know how many of you uh, were already present uh, during uh, the last uh, course that we had. Uh, this is not me again, but let me quickly share my, my screen so you can see how I look in an avatar. Hi everyone. I will now close it because we are having a network and bandwidth constraints, uh, too much rain in Greece uh, those days. So yes, today is a very exciting day because not only you will have the chance to um, you know, have uh, mini demos of uh, tools that would help you and assist you in applying the open science practices uh, and principles as we saw during the past uh, uh, courses, but uh, you will also get the chance to practice them yourself uh, by um, following a few exercises and see actually and, and how fair your data is and uh, if you can already now uh, an existing article that you have published somewhere if you can already uh, offer it in open access green open access uh, by depositing it in in a repository and so on so these are things that we will be um, touching upon today Plus, uh, during uh, at the, kind of at the end, we will also have a guest uh, speaker. He will be uh, talking about uh, the more he yes he will be talking about the more sensitive uh, aspects of data processing, and he will be showcasing a, a, a tool uh, that supports anonymization specifically for for um, data, uh, and also providing us with. Um, you know, a, a bit of insight and knowledge on how, uh, what are the differences between anonymization, pseudo-anonymization and other mechanisms that are being used for, um, for data protection and what are uh, those, um, the, the GDPR, uh, let's say, um, um, guidelines. So yes, oops, all right. So let's see, time to have some fun today. We'll start, uh, I tried to follow uh, um, a logical, um, a logical uh, path for this, uh, for this session. It's not a presentation, as we said. Uh, just, a re just to recap again, now you know, I think by now you know more than us, than me and Emma for research data management life cycles and the different steps and the different activities that are um, uh, under each step. But just to recap, uh, these are uh, the, uh, this is a research data life cycle and the, the different uh, activities, like we're starting from hypothesis, where we have to consider uh, when we plan our data, we have to consider um, the costs associated to each uh, activity. Uh, we start with data, we then move on to data collection when we have to be, uh, you know, and ensure that if we are reusing data, we don't uh, violate any copyrights. We, we have uh, a copyright clearance process uh, that we, we follow and we ensure that we also give credit through citations. Uh, to the to the people that are uh, we are using their data, um, processing during the processing we make use of open source software and open interfaces to process our data and clean and tidy them uh, and uh, make them uh, you know prepare them for uh, analysis. Um, storing data and results, we make use of service infrastructure. We might store uh, our results uh, due th throughout the um, throughout the research. Uh, project, we might store them uh, locally or we use uh, institutional uh, infrastructure provided by our institutions like uh, cloud drives or, um, uh, or storage facilities that are from our institution. We attach a persistent identifier to our results, we describe metadata and we publish metadata with an open license. Uh, for the long-term preservation, we use services that safeguard the preservation and integrity of materials and produce standard metadata. So we use standards for our metadata, not uh, just um, some fields. We don't just introduce some fields that can be used uh, for information exchange, but we actually make sure that they are uh, in, that they are provided. We are following a standard for metadata exchange. Publication and distribution, we publish metadata with an open license, we use open evaluation if applicable, 
uh, we ensure links between publications, data, and methods, and make use of repositories. And uh, for reuse, we ensure the accumulation of credits and we clear uh, citations. So this is, again, just to, 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 review, to revisit uh, what has been already said um, during the past, uh, the past courses. So let's see how we can find and where we can find uh, information with open access information that we can immediately uh, use and exploit for our research. Uh, this, uh, first, um, the, this first mini demo is for Open Air Explore, which is the search engine of Open Air. And let's uh, see. Oops. Yes. Okay, so let's see how this works. So I'm ready. Uh, do you do you still see? Because now I'm I'm using uh, br the browser. Do you still see my the the, the PPT or the? Uh, um, I think we see the PPT because it doesn't oh. move. Okay, so let me stop, sir. Or this will be difficult. My apologies. This this is such a fun session when we are face to face. <laughs> uh -huh. so we're really trying very hard to to make it. Uh, as, as you know, uh, as seamlessly uh, as possible. So uh, in the meanwhile, I will um, uh, paste the links uh, to the tools that Ellie is showing you in the chat so that uh, you have them. That would be a good idea, thank you. Yeah, so they can check now, Open Air Explorer. Okay. Let me see now, search screen. Hopefully you will be able. Yes. Do you, do you see Explore? And yes. All right, perfect. So this is uh, explore.openair.eu, as I said, is uh, the search engine of Openair. You can find, you can see how many um, content we aggregate and all the different sources that we use to, 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 too much to, to count and you know um, so this we try to categorize um, and, and create entities from this content to make it easier for people to uh, find information and to access information um, more more easily and uh, also more accurately uh, you can search uh, by all content, uh, so whatever is indexed in, in OpenAir, you can search by research outcomes, meaning uh, publications, research data, software, and other research outputs. Under other research outputs, you might find workflows, you might find um, um, uh, reports, you might find um, uh, posters, uh, uh, presentations, and uh, these kind of outputs. Uh, under you, you can search by projects, uh, so find projects, and there you will be able to see all the results that they have produced. You can find content providers uh, like from journal, uh, from journals, scientific journals, uh, repositories, data repositories, literature repositories, because there are different uh, differences in the type of uh, content uh, stored and preserved in repositories. So you have to make sure that you. Um, that, that you uh, select or search for uh, the repositories that they have the information that you want. And organizations, of course, um, you can search by organization um, and see what are the outcomes that they have produced. So let's say that I want to search for, um, and I will use the all content, but I, I want to search for this. Uh, output right here is the here ugh, let me minimize this do you still see is it still visible can yes you? okay okay great so here once you search once you click search you can see uh, the outcomes like the, um, what are the results you can uh, check in which category of the of, 
of, uh, of those that I've already mentioned, they, the results are under. So here we, we're talking about a research outcome, not a project, not a content provider, not an organization. Uh, it's, it's an open access, so we can see the mode that this uh, output is provided. Uh, we can, um, we, if, if we had uh, a more, uh, let's say, uh, not not the, a, a more broad uh, a broader search then we would have more results and we could filter by uh, publications which is data software so, so you have a few um, criteria here that you can filter with range the year you can sort by year uh, or this year last year last 10 years uh, you can sort by funder so this is um, pre-selected it's only one because it immediately found what I was looking uh, for, but you could find, uh, you can you could search from the list of funders, you could uh, search from the list of types, um, language, uh, and all the different uh, extra information that would really help uh, you to uh, refine your search and find your um, what you're looking for. You can all you can always download your results in a CSV. Um, here and use them for your research. Maybe you want to do uh, to, to do some statistical analysis. Um, and let's see. So this is my record, right? Now I will click to, to view my record. As I said, Opener aggregates information, so it doesn't uh, store anything in the database. It just provides all the uh, necessary uh, links uh, to the to accredited uh, sources uh, but, uh, but, they, but they store and preserve uh, this information. Uh, so we can see here that we're talking about a publication, a conference object. So it's a publication, uh, it's, so it's a, a publication for, for a conference object. Uh, it was published in 2020. And this is the title. These are the uh, authors, the associated authors. It's in an open access. It's an open access uh, and it's in English, published 17 November. We can see here what, uh, how many people have tweeted and we can, uh, you cannot see it here, but we also provide other metrics that you can um, consult. We can see the abstract of this output, the DOI, the free tech, uh, the, the keywords, uh, you can see who it's funded by, the communities uh, that it uh, supports, um, and so on. So if I want to check the full text, I have to click on the DOI, and then I'm redirected to, oops, to, uh, there's another record where it's actually uh, preserved. And I can see all that. So we see that it was a poster. It, it's, it has a DOI, the keywords, everything here. And I can preview and download it from this uh, platform, whatever platform this, this would be. In this case, it's an order, right? Um, this is, uh, I think, what I wanted to show you from here. But now, uh, we won't be able to see. So now I want you to, can you, can you see the PPT? No. No, we still see your um, browser. Stop and share again. Share again. Okay, now you see it, right? Yes. Uh, not in presentation mode. Okay. okay. Yes. So now uh, we would like uh, you to explore, explore, <laughs> to find a project, a Chistera project that you have worked. It should be um, uh, should be recent, uh, like from 2017, let's say, and find the project and. Uh, Please present, we can give you the rights and you can share your screen and show us what you're doing. We want you to show us the data sets and publications of this project. So 
probably we can uh, you you have the link to explore in the chat so when uh, you are done you can raise your hand and uh, i can give you the right exactly present. Okay, so sorry. but what do I see? Yes, I see Maria is um, ready. So Maria, let me promote you as a member. You should now be able uh, to speak and also to share your screen through the button on the uh, bottom of your screen. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I think you are watching my Firefox. Yes. Yes. Then I included vicinity. Mm -hmm. And there were so many projects, so I filtered by European here. Mm -hmm. And then here is the project. And now uh, there are uh, many publications, but I found it because I looked before for this uh, data set, uh, this publication. Well, it should be also a data set linked to it, but it's okay. Uh, then I have to show the publications, right? The, the data and the, and the link, the link is here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see, for example, uh, this EWOT experiment uh, is the data that is associated to an open access process uh, publication. Mm -hmm. And there should be two, there are two entries in Senodo because we have to make some changes after the reviewers. So this is the second one that has the, the data, the, also the software and the R files and then I think you ask for this the link to the project no I didn't, didn't ah, was, okay. uh, I, I was about to ask though <laughs> so you you can foresee things ah okay because I, I thought I saw that in the in the slide sorry ah yes yes I yes so it was the first part you can move on to the yes you can move on to the link part okay so this one Yes. Oh, I not a uh, sign in. So I cannot continue, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe. Do I need to to show something else? No, no, you, it's okay if you don't solve this. Don't worry. Ah, okay. Okay, then I stop sharing, right? Thank you very much, yes. Thank you. Yes, I now see that I uh, next I wanted you to link, yes, find the data set in these projects and link to, to a project. Um, so anyone else who was fortunate enough to find something or not, that can also be a, a use case that we can see together. I see no raised stands. Okay. So. I, I just wanted to say, like, uh, you can, because just era is, um, like, it, it, it is a consortium. So it is, um, it has many, many funders, uh, this consortium. So its funder has different entity and different uh, ID. Uh, now what we're doing is create, creating a, a, a unique and persistent ID for, the, well, we're not doing it, just ERA is doing it to, to facilitate um, 
uh, other research data management uh, needs that they have. So they are creating a, a unique persistent uh, ID for Chistera, which we are will be also using. So from now on, you the, the, the sorry the, the the example that you showed us, you searched. Uh, by uh, the European Commission, I think you, you mentioned, right? The, the funder. Yes. It's funder because one of the funding uh, organizations of Cistera was which funding organization? Sorry? I don't remember which funding organization was. Uh... You mean the one I saw? Yes, yes. Uh, so I look for the vicinity project and it is a European Commission, it's an H2020 project. Mm -hmm. Okay. In I, I think it's I, ICT. Okay. So let me find a Chistera one, for example. Let me see the projects. Uh, if you go, uh, I, I don't know if you have a, a project, it's just there a project uh, that you want to suggest that we search together? So, so there might be, maybe there are some Chistera researchers who would like to, to search for their own works. Otherwise, I could give you many, many examples. Um, one example, you could go and um, well, let me let me do it myself, perhaps. I found this one. Oh, yes, go ahead. So Abidi or Korsmal, yeah, that's one example. Okay. okay. So if we go to Abidi and we go, it says no result, but it, it's not a research outcome, it's a project. So here we can see the project, right? Uh, but, but we see that it has no publications in research data currently. Uh, I'm pretty sure that because it started uh, one year ago, I'm pretty sure that there, there are publications there. So if we search, but we cannot see them here, right? So we have to go, uh, we have to know exactly where to go to find them. Uh, not only us, but other researchers as well. So it, it creates uh, a bit of confusion. So if we know where these, uh, these publications are, we can link them. We, um, I have to, to sign in. We, we can link them. You have to have a, an opener account for that. And you can link, you can search opener. There you, you will be able to find something. And you can link them to the project very easy. So you just click link. It, it, uh, after I click the link, uh, it shows me this. I have to search, uh, open the research outcomes, and I don't know, can I, can I find the research outcome? Oops, let me, because I also view. Okay, let's see. So uh, if, if, I, if I had uh, a paper to search, then um, I could add it to, to here, right? And link to this project, but currently I have nothing. Uh, so, so this is how you link. Is it understandable? Yes, I, I guess so we, we can also say that this is uh, normally done automatically by the, uh, the open air platform, but sometimes uh, for some uh, repositories, uh, you can find the, uh, you, you, we are not able to uh, retrieve the links. So this is how you can manually link your output to the project. Uh, so. The, the, it's not something that you have to do always, uh, just to say, but uh, if you do not find uh, a particular publication assigned to your uh, or other results assigned to your project, uh, then you can still manually add it in this way. Mm -hmm. 
and then at the end you will have everything uh, in one space so you can easily know uh, and provide this information uh, immediately without losing uh, time when when you are uh, called to you know report for your activities on a specific uh, timeline then you will have everything in one uh, area oh is is it something in the QA? Where are the projects retrieved from? Can we create a new project in open air? So the projects uh, are, um, so we aggregate many resources as you saw, uh, like more than, I don't, rem I don't even remember, I've lost count, <laughs> some thousands uh, resources. So uh, one of them is Cordis, uh, another one is, it will be just ERA, uh, they, they are journals, they are, um, for, for projects though, it's Cordis. Uh, and if you, if you can create a new project in open air, uh, no, you cannot, uh, because it has to be a legitimate project that receives funding. So not something that is in a proposal stage, let's say. Uh, and only those that are the submitted proposals that are um, uh, that, that are successful are indexed in Opener. Hope hope I answered that your question. I don't know if Emma has to add anything. No. Okay. And then, can you add to explore that open their publications that are not open access? For example, I triple explore. Um, you, you can, I think, Emma, do you have, um, yes. So the thing is we have a list of uh, sources where we take uh, this, um, information from. So for, for publication, sometimes we also retrieve information directly from the publishers or we use, uh, um, cross -ref. Uh, also, uh, but the thing is, um, you can also add manually by using the DOI. Uh, so this is possible, but then uh, the the source, uh, the, the the record will not be open access. So sometimes you already find, I don't know if Ali can show, but uh, you already find some versions of the article that are not open access. Some of them are taken directly from the uh, journal website. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so I hope we answered this. And then we have another uh, question, Ali. Mm -hmm. I'm asking because I can see our project is there, but only from the Austrian partner, yes. So this will change, and this we are working with, uh, with Cistera to change, so that you can view uh, all the different uh, partners and uh, funding organizations under this project. I don't, uh, Ahmad, if you want to add something on that. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's a little bit, uh, it's a test, uh, so uh, we will, uh, very soon, we will soon assign, as uh, as you mentioned already, Ellie, um, identifiers for all projects, not just for the new projects, um, and try to collect as much data as possible on older projects, so it would be easy to to monitor also um, already um, already started projects. But again, the complexity is the fact uh, that there are a number of identifier a number of grants related to national funding agencies and not all projects re uh, acknowledge Chistera in the same way so this diversity create the complexity and um, and uh, but we're working on it mm -hmm. um, there is also a question in the chat from uh, Julia um, she's asking if the publications of the project are missing, can you add them or it's all automated? So the thing is that the publication and the results have to be deposited somewhere. So if you need to deposit something, 
like for example, an open access version of your paper or a data set, then you should uh, use one of the repositories that are linked to OpenAir, or if you have no one, you can use Zenodo. Um, so uh, in order to link a result to the project, it must be uh, deposited somewhere. And uh, in order to do so, you choose a repository and then OpenAir goes to the repository and retri retrieves information. Now, the only uh, repository that is directly connected immediately to OpenAir is Zenodo. So for all the others, uh, you have to wait uh, a couple of weeks in order mm -hmm. to see uh, your deposited uh, uh, record in OpenAir. Uh, so this is how it, uh, it works. Ellie, I don't know if you have anything to add here. No, no, I'm uh, also um, looking at the chat, but I think that was that's an extra uh, information provided for this question. But I, um, I have a project I work on called uh, Clothivit. I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry. But not database yet, only publications. Mm -hmm. It's nice because you can see what publications are open access. Yes, okay. So I think, yeah. I, with okay, I understand that. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe is this a, a project by Chistera or is it another funder? If uh, Julia can, can no, mm -hmm. it's an ERC. Okay, so it's probably not there because what we do is that the, the European Commission is giving us the data about the new project. Uh, I think it's uh, twice a year. So uh, yes, sometimes year. for the first part of the project, uh, we don't have the information. Okay, no publication appeared yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do have a paper, but did you, uh, um, this paper, is it uh, deposited somewhere in open access version? Yes. Okay. So probably mm -hmm. it's a matter of time. Uh, it to... would, yeah, it would be good if you could use the, the link uh, functionality. Mm -hmm. And if you have any problems, just let us know, but I, I'm sure that you will be able to resolve this. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we can add here, since you are all from the ICT domain, uh, it's that the ways uh, uh, open air connects projects and results are three. And uh, the first one is by looking at the metadata of the repository where you deposited the, the, the result. Mm -hmm. um, it is not always the case that the repository provides a field uh, for, uh, uh, for um, inserting uh, the grants. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes uh, uh, the, uh, the connection with OpenAir will not see this, even if it is available. So the second step that we do is that periodically we download all the um, uh, texts, so uh, the full text of the papers, and uh, we uh, have an algorithm for uh, text and data mining, and we check if inside the paper we find the reference to the um, uh, to some projects. And the third thing is uh, what Ellie just uh, showed about the manually link. So if uh, no one of these two methods um, work, still you can uh, search for the publication and link it to your project. So these are the three methods. So uh, if, uh, uh, Julia, if you want, you can go and check if your publication is in open air and then you can link it if it is already. Okay, so that is what you can do. If you link it, uh, if you find it, and then uh, you can link it to your project as Ellie was showing, because probably the information was not, I'm just realizing that maybe, sorry, um, I don't see mm -hmm. what uh, Julio was saying. We acknowledged another paper, I was confused. Okay, okay, so that's good. Another project, okay, 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 no problem. Uh, but this is the way uh, it works. So uh, you have to know that uh, uh, these are the three methods we use for 
uh, merging. I have mm -hmm. to say that in my uh, NOAD's uh, life, I get many, many uh, requests from people asking to remove some uh, link to projects uh, because uh, in some cases, people tend to insert the acknowledgement uh, to maybe all the projects uh, they are working on. And this uh, is done for many reasons, but sometimes it's not the good way to do because what happens is that when you link a project or acknowledge a project in a paper, then we find it and we send the publication to the funder. So sometimes people uh, get in, uh, in, uh, in trouble because they acknowledge a paper uh, that they shouldn't. And then they have to scientific report uh, in a project something that has nothing to do with it. So this is something that you, you should be aware of. So Ellie, sorry. Uh, no, 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 don't worry. I mean, th these are uh, very useful uh, things to know. Okay, so I think you answered that. So I can move on. We were here uh, looking at the metadata. We're about to, uh, to see what tool can help us with metadata. Uh, finding which metadata standard to use. So this is a, a, a very useful tool. It has um, a list of, uh, it indexes a list of metadata standards and it also, it, metadata standards are categorized per uh, subject areas, which makes it very uh, easy uh, to, to find and allocate uh, based on the, the research activity that you're doing is the most, um, uh, you know, the, the best solution for you. Uh, and let's see how, how this looks like. I now have to share it again. Maybe if I share the whole screen. Okay. So this is how it looks like. Um, the, the metadata directory, it was created by the Research Data Alliance. It's an initiative from the Research Data Alliance. Um, I don't know how many of you know the Research Data Alliance. It's a global forum where people can uh, uh, show interest. Uh, there are many working groups and interest groups uh, available and they can show interest and uh, find, um, uh, find people to uh, <clears throat> so to voluntarily work together and um, address major uh, needs and major, um, you know, issues uh, that the, your specific um, the discipline area uh, is dealing with at the moment. Uh, the business category, uh, you can feel the standards that are out there. Uh, in, in this, this is one way that you can view them, <clears throat> sorry, uh, the whole list, you can, you can see the, the title of the, um, of the standard, you can edit it, you can see a brief, uh, a brief description of what this standard is, is about, um, then you can also oops, view the standard, how it looks like, uh, what are uh, the, if there are any extension, if there are any use cases, you can, you can uh, consult uh, that will help you maybe uh, find commonalities with your research. So it makes it a, a better selection, a better candidate for you. You can see that you can be directed to the standard uh, web page and view uh, the schema, the different versions of the schema uh, that it's been um, followed. So yes, Oops. this is how it looks like. Uh, you can view the extensions associated to those standards because some uh, have minimum metadata, but some provide uh, also extensions that you 
uh, not only extension to the standard, but also uh, they are, the standards are provided as extensions for you to use uh, in your platforms. Uh, you can view uh, the tools that can support uh, metadata uh, here. You can view use cases from people that have already used some of those uh, standards. And you can browse by subject areas, um, which I think it's, uh, it's, it's very handy. Uh, and let's see if we search for um, material science, then we see that there, the standards uh, that pop up are about crystallography, and it's a core scientific metadata model, uh, it's Nexus and the National Standard for Storage and Exchange of Neutron, X-ray and new experiment data, so this is for, for this kind of data uh, to describe uh, this category. Um, and yes, you, you can uh, explore uh, how this standard has been used and you can learn how to use it by going to the website. Okay, so now, um, let's see, so now I want you to go to the, this website and find a metadata standard for your data, what you've been working on recently, for example. What's a, a specific discipline that you might be working on or just choose a metadata standard for your data from this list. And then uh, let us know once you have, uh, you, you select a standard, raise your hand so we can I give you the floor. Yeah, I think there is another question by Julia in ah. the chat. Uh, I have another question. This paper is acknowledging two projects, but I guess related to what you were saying, it can only be linked to one. No, it's no, fine. No. Yes, it's it's completely fine to link more than one project, uh, but uh, if they are both you, yes, uh, it could be something that you have done in conjunction. Uh, yes, it's it's uh, it's completely fine, no mm -hmm. problem. The only thing that you have to be uh, to care about is when you will have your um, um, review for the projects. Uh, be prepared that the, uh, the reviewers and project officer may ask you to uh, explain how this single paper is connected to both the projects that you have. Uh, so the one of the main reason, yeah, that, that is fine. It's fine to have, uh, you know, uh, synergies and uh, um, mm. superimposition in the work that you do for two project is completely fine. One thing is, is uh, related to both, but uh, I was referring before the question that I always get is removing uh, an article from a project because the article is not related at all to the project. So this happens uh, quite often, at least uh, many, uh, uh, many Italians um, do ask me to, to remove um, papers from the project. I don't know how, if Ellie, if you had any such. Yes, there are couple, Yes, yeah. so, uh, because sometimes people uh, add projects that are not related for many reasons. Many of those are, for example, administrative reasons uh, or, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, but sometimes, but we cannot. The, the, the thing is that open air is, um, uh, open air is providing a monitoring service for the EC and one of the things that uh, the, the EC and the other funders are asking us to do is to measure the, the impact and also uh, financially speaking. So, uh, for example, if you pay a conference uh, journey uh, with the money of a project, uh, because you have a paper, uh, a conference paper, then you should provide the funder uh, with the proof that the paper is scientifically connected to the to the project. 
Uh, okay, so Julia has some something else. Uh, no, uh, try to link this paper to the Chist era one. Yes, because yeah. it doesn't appear linked. Yes, you can do that. Please it, do that. Yes. Yeah, you can probably uh, you will probably see it linked uh, in the next weeks or months because when we. Uh, uh, run the, the um, uh, text and data mining algorithm, we will find it in the acknowledgement. Um, but this is because probably uh, Chistera now doesn't, so I don't know if this is a, a, an old project or a new one. And uh, so we didn't really look at all the project from Chistera in this moment. We will, but not now. Isn't it weird? It was linked to one project and not, not to, the, to other. the other. Yeah, it can be because uh, if the Chistera project is not linked to a funder that we already serve, probably uh, we don't have the project or we don't have the text and data mining algorithm set up to search for that project. It can be this or the other option can be that uh, for the other project that we found the, the link in another source, uh, maybe it is uh, this uh, is uh, in a repository that provides us with the, the only option of, of a single project. Mm -hmm. It has to also, I, I wanted to say that it has to do with the metadata that you also add uh, and what you information you provide in the, uh, in the journal that you publish. So if you, uh, if you acknowledge both uh, funders, uh, then it will go under both, but uh, if something uh, is missing from your part as well, it, it can be the case that it, it won't, like, like if, you, if you forget one, uh, one information, then you won't be able to find it uh, in the other. If, if you want, uh, Julia, you can paste the, the link to the uh, paper in the chat so we can check quick check if we understand why. It's not always the case that we can understand why we need then to go back to our technical team and ask them why. Mm -hmm. We can check. Okay, so okay. in the uh, meantime, I don't know if yeah. people had the chance to search for metadata standards to use in their um, in their uh, data activities. Anyone uh, that would like to? I'm just um, mm, putting in the chat the link to the metadata standard. Um, ah, sorry, I, yeah, I thought it's already Because otherwise, oh, okay. uh, they won't find it. Don't worry, I can do it. OK, so. That's the link, sorry, apologies. Yeah. If you can go to this link and um, yeah, find the proper metadata standard for you. Note that it might not sometimes uh, in uh, some disciplines and in some specific cases for, for data, uh, some metadata standards might not be uh, invented yet. <laughs> let's, let's use this verb. Uh, so it's not a problem if you cannot find it. But try to find something that is very close to the, the purpose that you are uh, conducting your research and the, the, that characterize your data. Yes, in the meanwhile, uh, I found that uh, the, the article that um, uh, Julia was uh, pointing us to is in one of the um, repositories and there it only has the link to the Clotilde project in the metadata. So this is probably why we mm -hmm. associated it only to one project because if you have a look here, uh, I will uh, provide you with this link to the repository and there you can see that a European Commission project that, that is uh, mentioned is only Clotilde. So um, I see that uh, here this was published in 2020. So probably we didn't yet download the text and, and uh, run the text and data mining. So that's probably why we didn't associate it to all the projects yet. 
but you can still do it manually. Okay. Any volunteer? Okay, let's give people one more minute, like until it's 55, one, one more minute. Okay. If no one has uh, has anything to add, please feel free to, to interrupt us later or raise your hand or add anything you want in the Q&A regarding this exercise. Um, in the meantime, I see that our colleague Manolo Sterovitis has joined us. Um, he is responsible for a tool that um, helps anonymize data. Um, we will continue with, um, with two or three more exercises and then we can move on to, to human knowledge, all right? Great. So. Yes, this is fine with me. Perfect. Uh, moving on to the presentation again. Um, Emma, oh, Emma and uh, also Avi uh, during the revision, uh, we um, touched upon this uh, issue, how you can license your data, and uh, Emma was very explicitly uh, describing and explaining uh, what are the different conditions uh, that uh, are attached to its license of the Creative Commons, which is a standard set of uh, machine-readable licenses that, licenses that are being used? Um, so please, uh, let's see that together, and then you can have an exercise on that. Uh, it's good if you can also... Um, also uh, go through the tool and try to license your own data following the different um, following the different steps. Let me stop, sir, and let me go back again here. Uh, is, is it something in the chat? I think something. Yeah, uh, so I put the link in the chat to the uh, Creative Commons tool. Okay. And also there is a question about um, uh, the plans to uh, add funded projects by the Irish Research Council. So I have no news about that. Mm -hmm. It's usually the funder that, that asks um, Open Air mm -hmm. to uh, provide the monitoring. Um, so maybe Ahmad knows um, about the Irish Research Council or is it is it part of uh, Chistera or is it outside Chistera? Yes, yes, they are they are members mm -hmm. of Chistera as well. Okay, so, yeah. so they so you will be able to find uh, to find them under the Chistera uh, ID uh, once it's uh, ready. And then uh, we can also check with the, the Irish funder to see whether they would like uh, to have something, you know, separately, like you, you're doing with the rest of, of funders, like European Commission and so on, like the ERC or the NSF. Okay. All right, perfect. So moving on, let me again share my screen because uh, See, share my screen. Uh, and this is uh, this is a tool that you can use. Uh, it's provided by Creative Commons, and it, it helps you understand how you would like to um, license your own data. So let's see. The, the steps are six, uh, and those are the questions as well. 
uh, starting with uh, if you know which lessons you need. I guess if you know this is a self, self-explanatory, you, do, you don't have to do anything, you know what to use and uh, you don't need this tool. So let's assume that I do not know and I need help with selecting my license, right? Uh, the next question that uh, they I have to have in mind is if, um, if I want attribution for my work, do I want others to cite uh, and to, to acknowledge my work my data? Uh, yes or no? Yes, anyone using my work must include proper attribution. No, anyone can use my work even without giving my, my, my attribution. Let's say that I would like at least to, to someone to attribute uh, this uh, work um, on me. Do you want to allow others to use your work commercially? Yes, no. Uh, yes, others can use my work even for commercial purposes. No, others cannot use my work for commercial purposes. Let's say that uh, I don't want them to use it for commercial purposes, right? So maybe I want them to use it for educational purposes and that's fine. Do you want to allow others to remix, adapt, or build upon your work? Yes, others can remix, adapt, or build upon my work, or no, others may only use my work in an adapted form. So uh, yes, I would like others to remix and adapt my work, so because so, this will get, get, get me more credits, right, since I will get acknowledged. Do you want to allow others to share adaptations under any terms? Yes or no again? Yes, others can share adaptations of my work under any terms, so they can share, uh, they can uh, take uh, the, their work, uh, their work um, in addition to my work, and they can share it uh, with any license that they want, or no, others must license adaptations of my work under identical terms. Uh, let's say that I want them to license it under identical terms. Next. Uh, so we see here uh, all this time, this, uh, this was in parallel, was being built, uh, the type of the license that, um, that correlates, that corresponds to each of the answer that I provided. So here we see that for, uh, for my answers, the, it seems that the correct license for me is uh, the attribution share alike for international. Uh, it looks like this, <clears throat> where credit must be given to me as a creator and adaptations must be shared under the same terms. So under the li this license. <clears throat> so, and if I want, I can also fill out this form uh, by adding my uh, my information here uh, and while I'm doing this you see that this changes this is how others this is a text that I can uh, copy and paste and add it under my work for in a presentation for example and this is uh, how others can also share my uh, my work they can copy and paste this uh, and acknowledge me in this in this format. A URL of creator profile. Let's say, oops, what did I do? Something appeared. Uh, let me see the URL of my profile. Let's say it's that one. Um, and let's say this is my profile title of work. Uh, and the uh, work URL, let's say that it's, I don't know, that one. where they can find my work, right? That's the work URL. And now I have, uh, I have built this. I know what the license, what uh, exactly, uh, what, what's the exact license that I can use that, that suits me and how to properly uh, 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 others know how to properly cite me and acknowledge my work following this. So if I copy it and paste it, paste it somewhere, uh, then others will do the same. Okay. Uh, so, so Ali, we have a question in the chat. Ah, okay. uh, <laughs> yes. So the other day you said that, that commercial purposes include this publication in ranked journals. So we need to add this if we want to be cited or used in papers, right? So the thing is, um, 
scientific uh, um, publisher are commercials. So uh, if you want others to uh, adapt and reuse your contents for a publication, yes, definitely you should not say that uh, you uh, do not want a commercial use uh, for uh, the reuse. So you should not include NC in the license because this will not allow people to reuse for the commercial purpose of publishing a paper into a journal. So uh, in, case in, uh, in case instead, uh, and this is well um, uh, highlighted in, uh, in um, the fact sheet from uh, um, Creative Commons. Uh, I already gave you the link in the in the um, in in my presentations, but I can paste it again here. Um, but for other purposes, for example, if I want to share uh, the presentations of this course and say that I do not want others to reuse them for commercial purposes, then I can do that. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what you are sharing. Mm -hmm. And of course, yes, uh, it's correct what you're saying, Emma, that you have to uh, check with the publisher's uh, options, what are the licenses that they uh, assign to, to the papers and to the data that they want you to assign to the, to the papers or data. If it's a commercial one, right? And if it's not just a positive. And now I think you can, uh, it, would, it would be good if you can also go through the, the tool and choose a license for your data. Choose a data first uh, that you, you might want to license and then provide, uh, provide a license for them. Uh, and one option that you could do is this. Uh, and the second option is that you can check other researchers license to know how to reuse their work. Um, that's also a good option. If, if you can search for data and find how find the license associated with those data and tell us how you can reuse it. Hey, did you have the link in the chat? Yes. I put uh, the link to this uh, tool. Uh, so let me paste it again because I already I also gave some other uh, links mm -hmm. and once you're uh, done please raise your hand so we can uh, give you the rights to uh, let us know uh, yes, to speak, of course, give you the rights to have a microphone and then you can let us know which uh, option you chose and uh, how, how, what are the steps that you followed, what was the outcome. Let's take five minutes for that.
I see um, a, a ah. question in the chat. Mm -hmm. I don't see raise the hands uh, now, but uh, um, uh, how limiting is the share alike attribute? I mean, if we can allow commercial use, but then we add the share alike, isn't it contradictory? Yes. So the share alike is something that um, limits the uh, uh, the the uh, license that can be applied to derivative um, works and uh, open uh, the, the um, uh, Creative Commons framework uh, provides you with uh, 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 a list of uh, a, a table where you can find the uh, um, um, licenses that are compatible uh, with this. So I can um, I can find you uh, this uh, this table and link it to you. Um, so when you put the share alike, then uh, you you basically limit what the others can what the license that other people can apply to derivative work. Uh, not all the licenses are compatible, so you should also be aware when you reuse something that is under the share alike uh, uh, that the license needs to be provided accordingly. Um, then we have another, another question, how it is expected to give credits when someone reuses, for example, an image? Mm -hmm. In our case, we made available some images for the people to reuse or adapt. We are not sure how they keep the attribution when adapting. Mm -hmm. Then we included guidelines with the explicit text they should be using. Uh, are we doing it wrong? Uh, so uh, I'm not sure is the text related to the lice, to the... Uh, yes, I have opened that link. Okay, okay. So Ali, so please take it. It says that if you want to use the lot figures, uh, please follow the guidelines. If you want to use the figures without modifications, use the figure with the current license and authors. Um, let us know in which project we are using them so that we keep track of their adoption. We will appreciate it. Um, and then if you want to adapt the figures, if you need to adapt the figures and methodologies to your particular use case, fork the lot repository it is the one, the first uh, guideline. Keep the CC by NCSA license with the statement derived from lot methodology and so on. Uh, and third is upload the figure to a new folder in the forked repository with the name of the project and generate a pull request to the lot repository so that we can keep track uh, and adoption uh, and so on. Um, no, you're not doing it wrong uh, is, is, is the first reaction to, to, your, uh, to your question. Uh, but it is true that you cannot uh, know always if people uh, are are doing are following those guidelines or not? That is true. Uh, however, if you find a, like for example, if you if you come across this image without having been properly um, cited, you know, acknowledged, then you can um, you can report this. Um, and there are some cases uh, on the on the website of Creative Commons where things uh, when when misuse uh, of uh, Creative Commons licensed uh, content has been um, found and has been reported. So you can you can always report it. But unfortunately, I'm afraid at this stage I don't know if Emma has to to add anything. Uh, there is no way to know. Uh, if they are following the guidelines or not. Yeah, um, the thing is, uh, as as always in this uh, legal uh, uh, framework, uh, if you find someone reusing your material in not in a proper way, then you should ask them to. Uh, but it's uh, this happens also with with open air. Uh, we find. Uh, Many many people are using our material without following the the rules, but mm -hmm. this is uh, yeah something that uh, you cannot skip, I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, there are a few raised hands, by the way. Oh, oh where, 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 where? So maybe, maybe yeah. just give the floor to Jean Martinet. Yeah. Can uh, Jean? I think yes. you. Yes, there you are. Hello. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, I'm trying to. So do I have the right to share my screen? Okay. Or I don't know, am, am I supposed to do so? Uh, if you try now. Does it work? Yeah. Okay. So actually, it's uh, I, 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 it's some data set that doesn't exist yet. So the URL mm -hmm. is blank. But uh, I basically I followed your advice for choosing all the steps, and uh, which is quite nice to to have this rich text automatically generated here. Okay, uh, this. Uh... The only thing that it's not uh, exist is the word URL, right? Is what? Uh, the example is totally. Uh, is it um, fictional or not? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, it, it's fictional. Ah, okay, uh, perfect. It, perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's fictional. So okay, we great. we are, we are in the process of designing the data set, but it, it doesn't exist yet. Okay, good, good. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, just w one question. So when we, uh, uh, if we have several authors, sh should we should you write them here? Yes, yes, of course okay. you can. Right. It doesn't matter uh, how you write it. It's not okay. like uh, in citations, you know, the standards, uh, the MLA or Chicago or Harvard, it doesn't follow this kind of uh, rules. It's free text so you can use comma or and or as you wish okay, okay. thank you um thank you uh, anyone else ah we have an, another uh, another hand raised promote okay can you open oops can you open the mic now uh yes hola hello yes hi Julia. okay um so I don't know how to share my screen. Ah, no, now I can, okay. Yes. So I created, this one is a real thing. I do have a question though, like this website automatically assigns a license or, or do I need to do something else? No, it doesn't. It help you uh, find the correct license. Ah. Okay. So then you need to copy and paste, uh, you know, take this information and use them uh, in the context and in the, in the research output that you want. Uh, so for instance, if I copy this and now I put it, so this is a, it's not work exactly, but it is work, but it's like a, I did a book on robotics mm -hmm. for children mm -hmm. and it's published online and, and I don't mm -hmm. have any license on it. But, but you can add it there, embed yeah. it. So I, I can just put this in the website, the, I can or, copy the HTML, and then automatically exactly. my work has this license. Exactly, exactly, yes. Ah, that's kind of easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, and, 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 and then if I want to undo it, so for instance, if one day I want to publish this book commercially and I find an editor that is willing to do it, then I can mm. remove this because I put non-commercial share alike. Then I can just remove it or, or no? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a, a tricky <laughs> question. I, it's, it, I'm the author, so like uh, I can do, I can decide to change it or no, because then I prefer the not to do anything. The only thing is that uh, you cannot, um, other people that would have used your yes. work, for example, you, you cannot uh, revert this. Like the past, you cannot revert things that have been done in the past. You see, uh, but really, like that is if it's really that as easy as copying this in my website, I can just remove it and nobody's really gonna know, gonna know. I mean, 
I don't understand. Yeah, but understand. then someone may have yes. used the before yeah, you remove I see. it. Okay. Okay. So if I yes. if you put it online today, I've downloaded yes. okay. tomorrow and I use it uh, yes. for something, and then you remove the license. Uh, so I, see, I, I am see. not aware of it. That yes. You removed it so. Yeah, yeah, you okay, should, I understand. Okay, yeah, 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 you should ask some some legal experts. Um. Yeah, that's my problem with licenses always that mm -hmm. they are very confusing to me, and and I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, uh, be be aware that if you do not provide a license, then it's the trouble because yes. people, uh, <laughs> it it will you you are not protecting your work. I understand. Yes. yes. Yeah. This is totally unprotected because I yes. just, I just shared it publicly, like yes. I, like take it, like I, yeah. like because it it's because exactly. it's something like for children and I actually want as many people as possible. But we've been talking about the possibility of actually editing this book and selling it. Mm -hmm. So then it's better if I don't put anything. No, I think it's good if you, it's non-commercial, the license you picked, so you will be fine. Uh, if you also talk to the editor, the sorry, the publisher, that uh, you you have been using this license, so you might, uh, you know, get but to it. I cannot really sell the book, even if I donate, because uh, if I ever sell this book, it's going to be to donate it to some cause, but I don't... I'm not sure then if I follow my own license. Yeah, yeah. The thing is that this license is for the others to reuse your your work. Mm -hmm. So ah, it's not okay. yes. So, but but you should ask a, a legal expert, or maybe we can check on on Creative Commons website if they have an FAQ about this. It's probably they do. Um, so this is for the others to reuse your work. Oh, so then um, I could. I could publish it. Yeah, I'm not saying that you could, but uh, uh, probably, good. and, and uh, you have to check in the Creative Commons uh, okay. uh, framework or FAQ. I can go and check for you if... Uh, I mean, if if she retains uh, copyright, she, for, after, you know, the, the contract, in, in the contract agreement with the publisher, then she will be fine. But, but cl yes, cl um, I will yes, take... So I will agree with Emma. Okay. So this is just a website where I, you can see the book, but you cannot download it. I already kind of protected mm. it. Away, mm -hmm. So you can... Okay. And then you can download some stuff that is fine. It's just to build a, a toy and something like this. Mm -hmm. So if I can just add here this text and then that could be covered by the license. Yes. Okay. It would be better if 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 you add the, a license than leaving it like this. Okay. Okay. And well done. It looks like a good book. <laughs> <laughs> well. Thank you for okay. sharing that with us. Ah, stop sharing. Okay. I was not. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Great. All right. So let's move on. At, oh, do we have any raised hands? Uh, no, I don't see any. No. Okay. No. So if we move on. Oh, just one, um, while you, you share your screen, the, the um, uh, people that are, uh, okay, so I see no, no other, um, uh, Maria and, and uh, the others are back to uh, attendees, but if you are a, a um, speaker for this course, then you cannot raise your hand. So just open your mic and, and talk. I see you put back them in attendees way. Okay, just go on, Ellie. Like, okay, no, I, I was about to give the floor to Manolis uh, since uh, we are in this process. You know, we, we we have been talking about metadata licenses. These are all uh, things that we are doing uh, throughout the process and analysis of data steps. So I guess it fits well if we if. Manolis can introduce uh, us to, to anonymization in Amnesia. Manolis? Thanks a lot, Eli. Sorry, I was searching for the window. No uh, I'm happy. Thanks for the invitation. And 
will be happy to talk about amnesia and data anonymization. Let me share my screen right away. Um, okay, I understand that you did uh, the rest of the presentations are more hands-on, but uh, because anonymization is a new process and the, I think there is need to so for some context and uh, background, uh, I will focus on giving a, a PowerPoint presentation uh, and there I will describe what amnesia does. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll have time for a, uh, a, very, uh, a very quick demo or I would be happy to have a full demo uh, some other time. So I'm an old stereovitis, I'm a researcher in uh, uh, Athens Research Center, and uh, I'm leading the development of a data anonymization tool called Amnesia, which is offered through Open Air and it's available in the EOS catalog. Uh, so, uh, before going into the details uh, about uh, Amnesia, I'm going to talk a bit uh, about anonymization. Um, you all know GDPR. Uh, so the, the introduction of GDPR uh, uh, cleared uh, the ground to define what is anonymous data, what is it is not. So uh, now the usage of personal da data is uh, regulated, and uh, you have uh, you can uh, use personal data only if uh, the uh, the law permits you or. Uh, the contract you make with a person permits you or there's explicit co uh, consent. Also, you can use for research data that you have already collected uh, for research purposes without consent. Uh, now, the, the users, even when you use personal data, there are the limitations on, uh, and several uh, overheads uh, on how you use them. For example, if uh, you use the data based on consent, then uh, consent might be uh, withdrawn. You have to take a lot of security measures to prove that uh, at any point you're doing whatever possible to protect uh, user data. Um, if you use it for research, then you have to have some internal processes that uh, uh, assess that it's uh, co uh, that the data are correctly used, that there is uh, uh, some uh, internal oversight that it is used only for uh, research uh, purposes. Um, also, data is hard to share with third parties uh, uh, for research, but uh, because, without consent and uh, sharing uh, with the now distributed environments of uh, data processing is something very common. So, what an, uh, anonymization does it it unlocks the poten potential of the data by removing the the barriers of GDPR. When we, we want to use data for research or marketing or uh, some kind of uh, knowledge extraction process, we're not really interested on uh, the personally identifying information, uh, but we're mostly interested on statistical properties, uh, on uh, patterns, on hidden knowledge artifacts. Uh, so the idea of the anonymization is to remove the personally identifying information and preserve the interesting knowledge in the data. Now, before going more into anonymization, I would like to make uh, clear uh, two terms uh, in the way they're defined in GDPR. Because when we use the term anonymization in everyday language, we usually uh, in, and in everyday practice, we usually refer to what uh, GDPR uh, defines as uh, pseudonymization. Uh, the pseudonymization uh, is uh, the removal of personal identifiers from data and uh, uh, the, uh, po the possible insertion of an arbitrary identifi uh, identifier. And the main characteristic of uh, the pseudonymization is that uh, the, uh, that it is reversible. We, you can map the anonymize uh, using some external knowledge. You can take the uh, anonymous data and retrieve the identities of uh, the original uh, 
persons. This can be done by an arbitrary identifier, but it can also be done by combinations of uh, unique uh, identifiers, which we call uh, unique combinations of uh, descript descriptive uh, uh, information, which we call uh, quasi identifiers. Such information can be the date of birth and the zip code. For example, if, you, if someone has a unique, which is very common also, unique combination of zip code and uh, date of birth, then this information can be used to re-identify him. So this is called pseudonymization and pseudonymized data remain personal data and uh, the data curator uh, or the data owner have to uh, adhere to all GDPR limitations. But if we do anonymization in the sense of GDPR, uh, true anonymization, then uh, the anonymization process is an irreversible uh, transformation of the data. Uh, there is some kind of guarantee that uh, anonymized data cannot be reverted back uh, to the original data. And this is what amnesia does. It, uh, and what we're going to talk about here is the transformation of the original data to an anonymous form where the guarantees that uh, this uh, uh, transformation cannot be reversed. Um, so the, the motivation for anonymizing is that if we, re if we do real anonymization of the data, then the data are no longer personal. So they fall outside the scope of GDPR and uh, you don't have the limitations of uh, GDPR. Uh, anonymization provides a, a, a statistical guarantee on the data transformation. And uh, this allows the data owner to prove that uh, uh, see where he has taken all measures uh, needed to protect user privacy. So apart from the GDPR, uh, it, it actually gives uh, a, a tangible uh, uh, guarantee, to, uh, it offers a tangible guarantee to users uh, for the safety of their data. So uh, I, I told you what's the great things that uh, anonymization does. L let's see the, its limitations. Uh, this one-way transformation uh, by definition loses uh, so, uh, some important information. So for example, uh, if you have the date of a birth of a person, then you might have to replace it by the year of birth or by the decade. So this information, the accuracy of information is reduced so that's no longer identifying. This might be okay in some applications, in some others, uh, the, this reduction in uh, the data quality uh, might be unacceptable. Um, GDPR and, uh, ma makes a clear distinction, uh, as I told you before, uh, between anonymized and pseudonymized data. In practice, this clear distinction uh, has some gray areas. For example, uh, even if uh, data transformation cannot be uh, reversed, maybe it can be partially reversed and uh, some information can be leaked. Uh, there's a discussion in, uh, uh, the working uh, in uh, the ECC's relevant working group where it uh, identifies these problems. Uh, so it, it falls always to the curator to make uh, some decisions on, on these great areas, what's uh, uh, adequate protection. Uh, I would like here to comment that the methods we present here are usually uh, beyond what's usually used in practice. So I think there's uh, no doubt that someone can uh, uh, justify that it has taken, uh, you know, the, the best state of the art uh, available methods for protecting uh, her or his data. Um, so the, part of the gray area is that we offer some statistical guarantees that uh, uh, da uh, the data transformation is not reversed. Uh, Privacy is a social notion. Sometimes some uh, information that uh, can be leaked or infer might be enough to break the user's privacy, uh, whereas every statistical guarantee holds. Uh, this is a more philosophical problem in a way because if according to GDPR, you have taken all reasonable measures, then 
uh, you have adhered by, uh, to, to the law. Um, and because uh, till now we, we lack uh, uh, experience uh, in practice, there's no uh, years of usage of these methods, it cannot be fully automated. Uh, you need some user input and decisions have to be uh, taken. Uh, so uh, we saw what's the good anonymization, what's its limitations, and then when to use it. Uh, anonymization does not replace uh, crypto, uh, crypto encryption. Uh, it's complementary to that. Uh, anonymization is suitable when you want to give your data to a party that you do not fully trust. Uh, this is a good example of this is if you want to publish your data publicly. So you don't know exactly who will get it or give it to a large audience. Uh, so uh, you're not going to sign an NDA. You do not have, uh, it's very, very difficult to uh, take all the measures that GDPR requires. So instead you will reduce a, a bit of the data quality and transform everything from personal to statistical data. So, uh, if you're a practitioner and you want to give it to the research community uh, is a, a good example. Uh, when you want to do open publications, uh, when a reduction to information quality does not cause a real problem. So anonymization is the simplest uh, method uh, in terms of uh, uh, sa uh, safety and uh, regulations. You do not have to take all the precautions that GDPR requires if the data are anonymized. And um, after this summarization of uh, what anonymization means, I'm going to tell you a few things about how Amnesia works. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to talk about is why you should choose Amnesia. And uh, one thing that we put uh, real effort is to make it user friendly. When you, you use it, you will find it even uh, despite our, our efforts, a bit of complicated tool. We believe that it's uh, one of the simplest compared to other, uh, very few other tools that exist that, that do uh, relative uh, stuff. It is a complicated process. As, uh, the more uh, users' feedback we have, the more we'll be able to automate things and make it uh, even user-friendly. Uh, Amnesia works locally. We do have an online version that you can use it for uh, demo training purposes, but uh, we have some limitations on the data files it accepts. And also it's not a safe scenario to, to use an online service to anonymize your data. But we have also available the uh, application which you can download. Uh, to your local premises and anonymize the data locally. Uh, it gives a lot of power to the users to customize the solution and decide uh, uh, which information loss uh, should be chosen. There are many ways to lose information to make the data anonymous. Uh, you can put different weights to different uh, attributes of your records. So the data are optimally anonymized for your analytics. Uh, we do have, uh, we do offer algorithms for complicated data like set value data. These are records that have a, a collection of uh, arbitrary length of uh, uh, events or attributes like uh, uh, the, the, uh, the bill from a retail store. Uh, and we have, uh, uh, a special form of K-anonymity for that, K-anonymity, and we're the only tool uh, that does that. And finally, Amnesia, uh, you can use it uh, as a completely standalone application with uh, the user-friendly interface, but you can also use just the backend engine uh, through a REST API. And this is very useful if you are developing your own information system and you just want to incorporate uh, the anonymization engine of Amnesia uh, through your own interface. Uh, okay, these statistics are one or two months uh, old. They refer for the 1.5 years or two years that the Amnesia site was up. We had uh, 32,000 visitors, uh, more than 100 uh, page views and 2,000 unique downloads. And in general, it becomes more and more popular as uh, time passes. 
Uh, we offer K anonymity, KM anonymity. We deal with object relational data sets. We have algorithms that scale to very big data that do not fit in main memory. Uh, we, prefer, uh, we offer a REST API. Uh, so you can use it with information systems. And we have it uh, up for two years. So uh, the main components are no longer beta. Bugs have been re re removed and uh, it's quite st stable and robust. Um, I'm going to give you a quick example of what K-anonymity is and uh, what Amnesia actually does uh, after all this description. Imagine that we have this table where it has very simplified uh, medical records of patients. Uh, we have, uh, this is a pseudonymous data. The names have been removed. We ju just have an arbitrary ID. And then you have the zip code, the age, and the nationality of a person. And for each person, we have the diagnosis. So uh, these three attributes, the zip code, the age, and the nationality are quasi-identifiers, uh, can act as quasi-identifiers because it's information that, that can, can easily be retrieved from other sources about a person. So uh, this pseudonymized data set is not safe because if I know, for example, that John is uh, uh, American and he has a zip code of 13068 and he's uh, 29 years old, then I can uniquely identify uh, his, uh, his record and, uh, and see that he has been diagnosed with uh, heart problems. So uh, pseudonymization is not safe if uh, you can uh, link, uh, you have uh, additional uh, descriptive information. Now, what Amnesia would do, it would transform all the quasi-identifiers in a way that uh, it would create groups of K records where the values of the quasi-identifiers would be identical. Uh, the way it would do that would be to replace specific values with more ge uh, generic ones. We call this process generalization. Uh, and it would do this as as much as needed uh, as to uh, have uh, every record belonging to a group of uh, K records. So what, in this example, what it did is it removed uh, a few digits from the zip code. Uh, it creates three age categories, less than 30, 30 to 40, and uh, more than 40, and, and they completely removed nationality. So now, uh, if I know that, uh, John has a zip code of 13068 and he's 29 years old. I cannot identify which of the uh, four first records uh, belongs to him and uh, he might have heart disease, he might have viral infection. I can no longer decide uh, exa exactly uh, the diagnosis has been given. Um, to do this, uh, there's need of some user input on how the replacements of specific values with more generic ones uh, will happen. Um, if we have uh, some continuous domain like numbers, then this is simple, simpler. We have a total order and then we can uh, define different ranges. Uh, so we'll say that the exact numbers should be, can be replaced by uh, uh, steps of uh, 10. Uh, of integers, and then we could have, if we had a larger domain, we would have more levels here saying that if uh, these steps of, uh, of size 10 are not enough, do steps of size 50 and then 500 and so on. So the user has to provide uh, what we call a generalization hierarchy, which shows, uh, which instructs the algorithm how specific values can be replaced with more generic ones. Uh, the work of the algorithm is to choose how much, uh, it's, uh, how much its value should be generalized uh, as to guarantee the desired uh, anonymity. And it will generalize it as little as possible uh, as to achieve the desired uh, privacy requirement. Um, okay, since it's the first... Uh, I think lecture, I'm not going to get into the details of KM anonymity, which is used for high dimensional data. 
the ID and KM anonymity is uh, that uh, we do not provide protection against uh, adversaries that might know all quasi identifiers, but uh, because the situation where the quasi identifier can uh, can be thousands, uh, and uh, we. We limit uh, the potential knowledge of an adversary, saying that I'm going to protect against adversaries that knows three or five quasi identifiers, and then we make certain that every combination of m quasi identifiers appears k times in uh, the anonymized data set. And this technique is uh, uh, suitable for sparse high, high dimensional data. Um, so the limitations of the tools, uh, the tool uh, which you should be aware uh, are the following. Uh, the, the first problem is not actually about the tool is that the concept of anonymization is new. So uh, users do not know what to expect from the tool, which is makes uh, using it uh, a lot harder. Uh, Another limitation is that Amnesia does the anonymization, but it cannot uh, provide uh, uh, guidance on how to uh, define the main parameters of uh, the privacy guarantee. For example, in K-anonymity, uh, it cannot decide on the K. This is a decision that has to be taken of the user. This is based on practice. Um, uh, if people ask me, I uh, just refer to what the statistical authorities uh, usually do. In Greece, they use uh, groups of size uh, three when they publish aggregate results, not K anonymous results. And uh, Eurostat, I think, uses groups of size five. Uh, and the last thing is that uh, K anonymity and uh, the other guarantees of this family protect against certain types of attacks. Uh, they're not safe under every scenario. Uh, but this uh, falls on the problem of gray areas between pseudo-anonymization and anonymization. Uh, I think for most uh, common applications, K-anonymity is way beyond what's happening now in practice. So that was all. I think I've taken up my time. I don't know, Alice, uh, do I have a few minutes to do a very quick demo of Amnesia? Yes, yes, you can You can take five minutes to do like a flow, to show us a flow of how Amnesia works. And in the meantime, as you are preparing, I think you have to uh, answer your screen and share your screen again because... Uh, yes, I will stop share and reshare. Yes, yes, because okay. I'm not sure because you will be using the browser or uh, what you will be using. Will be visible. In the meantime, there is a, a question in the Q&A that I, I will uh, read out loud for you. Is it possible to choose which variables you might want to keep, for example, if you wanted to keep the nationality because it was necessary for further analysis? Yeah, yes, it is. Uh, th this is the whole idea of uh, guiding the anonymization process that uh, uh, you can choose w which variables uh, uh, you, uh, which variables will be preserved at the end, and you can even choose uh, which variables will be preserved better than others, and all these choices are up to the user. I I'm going to show you quickly in the demo how to do that. Now, you, s you see the, the first screen of Amnesia, I guess, yes. everyone. So, I'm loading a data set. Uh, Amnesia accepts uh, delimited uh, files. Like uh, Manoli, sorry to interrupt you, but we, at least I, I, in my end, I cannot read them. They're very tiny, the, the, the letters. Can we zoom? Uh, I don't know how to do that, how to zoom, because uh, in my screen, it's the whole screen. I don't know. No. Okay. Now it's better if I resize. Yes. Has something changed here? Yes, it has. We only see. Ah, okay, better, better. Yes. Okay. Better. So the delimited files, you can uh, define which it's text files uh, where it's uh, column uh, uh, is using a delimiter to uh, be di distinguished from uh, the rest of the columns. Here, it's a comma delimited file. And Amnesia guess, uh, then presents a preview of the data as it understands it. 
uh, here by unchecking uh, some of the data, we simply remove them. So if you want to pseudo anonymize the data, uh, we just remove the uh, rect identifiers as I did it and the data is already pseudo anonymized. Now Amnesia has guessed uh, the type of the data, uh, but this is just a guess. It uses only the first, uh, uh, the first few records for this guess. It might not be correct, but uh, uh, it semi-automates the work of the user. In this case, everything is correct. So I go on and this is the data set as it has been uh, loaded by Amnesia. Uh, it's again simplified medical records where here you have all the codes of the diagnosis and you have the date of birth and the marital status of uh, its user. Now, what we have to do is provide the uh, generalization hierarchies so that the algorithm will know how to uh, replace specific values with more generic ones. Uh, it can do, uh, we might use predefined hierarchies like this one that I have made uh, in advance and it's based on the values that appear in the data set because this is uh, a real data set. Uh, you know, we're really interested if someone was single or married and uh, people would answer uh, more eloquently saying no, divorced, widowed, or maybe did not answer at all. So we put that this signal. And Amnesia would also allow you to uh, create a hierarchy based on the data. This works uh, a lot easier on uh, continuous domains. Here we're going to do this for the date. Uh, date is one of the most complicated uh, uh, domains because uh, it does not follow uh, the decimal system, but uh, we have to count uh, in terms of years, in terms of months, uh, and then we group all years, uh, all groups to other groups of size three. So here I'm instructing uh, Amnesia on how to uh, create the different ranges uh, uh, in the uh, in the in the dates domain, and it will create. this hierarchy. Here we have ranges uh, in terms of weeks and weeks are grouped in uh, three month periods. Three month periods are grouped in uh, two year periods. And from now on, um, uh, all, uh, uh, all records are uh, grouped into nodes that have three um, three sub nodes, except for one that might have the leftovers. So uh, then we can use this information to anonymize the data. We have to instruct the algorithm to use the B date hierarchy we created with the date of birth, uh, the marriage hierarchy for the marital status field. I want K anonymity with K equal to three. So that's three anonymity. And here, I get this thing. This thing is a visual uh, a lattice that represents all possible solutions uh, for anonymizing the data set. The first number, uh, we, we had two quasi identifiers, the date of birth and the marital status. So these numbers uh, reflect how many times, uh, how many levels in the generalization hierarchy have we gone up to generalize its attribute. So the 4.0 says that we have uh, generalized date of birth uh, four times and we have left marital status as it is. Here we have generalized date of birth three times and we've left marital status and we have generalized marital status once. Now, the red nodes represent solutions that do not provide K anonymity and the blue ones uh, represent solutions that provide K anonymity. Now, for, uh, with respect to the question about if we could uh, save nationality uh, instead of some other uh, attribute, <coughs> excuse me, by choosing a different node, uh, we can choose how much information we're going to use in different field. Here, we preserve the marital status completely and we lose a lot of accuracy in the date of birth. Here, uh, we lose information in marital status and we preserve a lot better 
although perfect uh, cannot happen uh, for the date of birth. The reason that we see solutions that do not provide k anonymity is that sometimes k anonymity is uh, not achieved uh, just because of, a, of very few records. For example, here it's only 1.2 of the records that violate the k anonymity uh, in this uh, red solution. Right? I chose this solution where uh, the date of birth has been generalized uh, uh, three times and the marital status once. And uh, yeah, this is not a solution just because of 1.2 of uh, the record. So instead of choosing a, more, a solution that would generalize all the data more to get uh, uh, the desired anonymity, I could instead just remove this 1.2 of the records, and then my result would be k-anonymous. Um, let me... Okay, I'm trying to show you. Okay, now, as you see, the exact date of birth has been replaced by a two-year period, and the detailed information on marital status has been uh, uh, replaced by uh, single and married, which... Uh, more generic uh, answers than the original. And this is how uh, amnesia works. So uh, that's all from me. And I would be happy to respond to, uh, uh, to questions. Yes, uh, about the, the uploading. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are two versions of amnesia. We have the online version uh, the survey is in, in the EU, but we do not propose to use the online version uh, for anonymizing data. Uh, what we propose is that you download this information. Uh, the amnesia uh, I'm showing to you is a, loca uh, uh, a local uh, application. Uh, the server runs uh, automatically in the back end of your own computer, so you don't upload it to any other uh, place and uh, everything happens at your own premises so you do not have to worry about uh, where the data goes and this is the way we uh, propose that amnesia is used the online version is just to you know play with the dummy data set and see how amnesia works and uh, it's it just for demonstration purposes thank you very much Manolis. Thank you for answering also this question. <laughs> I saw that in the QA. I don't know if there are any questions for, for anonymization and amnesia also in particular. Uh, I don't see something now. But uh, okay, so let's continue. Uh, and if something uh, rises, uh, we can take it uh, at the next. Uh, up next. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot, Ellie. Thanks for Thank inviting you. me. If anyone has wants to use Amnesia or has additional uh, questions, feel, feel free to contact me uh, anytime uh, through email or uh, any way you want. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we saw how to uh, process and analyze our data. Oops, yes. But where to deposit our data? Uh, I think this, this tool has already been mentioned, so it needs no introductions. Uh, we can uh, check that online together now. Um, now we'll have to stop sharing and share again. Okay. And um, let's see, uh, have you, has anyone of you um, already used Refree Data. Refree Data is a, report, is a registry um, holding information, uh, indexing uh, and holding information about uh, data repositories. And it actually is a very useful tool for many reasons, um, which we'll, we'll, we'll see in a few minutes. So this is the, the first, the homepage you can, uh, add any keyword that you want to search the um, registry with. 
You can also uh, browse by subject, by content type, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the presentation, in the session, uh, there are different types uh, of repositories by country, maybe, if you want to find something that is closer to you, maybe your institution, if, if it provides a data repository. Um, and the rest, uh, I don't think, well, there is an API if you want to, if, if you're building, um, you know, any application that you want to, to use it, but I don't think it will uh, have a big impact for you, uh, the rest. So let's see, uh, let, let's say that I want to search for um, for uh, somewhere, I have a data set and I don't want, I don't know where to deposit it. So uh, let's say that I'm uh, working in the environmental area. Uh, so I just use the keyword environment and all these results, like 268 results appeared. Uh, I can refine my search. Uh, I can filter with uh, all these uh, different criteria that you see appear on the left-hand side. Uh, and uh, this is very useful because one of the things that re data does, re data is also uh, aggregated by opener. So whatever you see, um, most of the information that you, that you see here, you will be able to find in opener as well. But what the, the, the very interesting thing and important thing that re data does is that it provides you with um, um, a categorization uh, of, um, of the information about every data repository. Like for example, you can find the data repository and you can refine it by subject. You can refine it uh, by a country. Let's say that I want ah, Greece, there are three. Uh, let's say that I want to refine it uh, with uh, the API that it uses, the data license that it uses. Now I have already reset it, okay. The data license that it uses or the database license that it uses. If, if I have to comply with something, uh, with those licenses, I can uh, quickly find the repository to, to do so uh, with the metadata standards that I, I, I want to use, which repository supports which metadata standard. I can also refine my search with that. Uh, and there are other, uh, other um, as you see, m many different criteria that I can refine my uh, search. If there's versioning mechanism uh, integrated with my with the repository and so on. Uh, on the let, let's say that I want to um, I, I I want to refine my search first. Oh, there is also the certificate. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. If if the repository has a certificate, you remember that was all also mentioned, and we had a discussion during module two. Um, about how how this is, um, you know, how how uh, certification of repositories is also uh, an important uh, component uh, in the RDM ecosystem, uh, and so on. So let's uh, let's uh, try to refine uh, possibly uh, by uh, country. Right? So I will click Greece, and I will have. These uh, three uh, options, I can check uh, and, and compare what uh, the three of them do. So I can check the subjects and if uh, those subjects um, correspond to my research, you know. Uh, let's say uh, here is oceanography. But I don't see oceanography somewhere else, right? Neither to that one nor to the last one. So let's say that I want something um, that, that my data have to do with oceanography, then I can click on this uh, data repository and select this. But this is not the, this is only one uh, of, the, of the key information that I can, um, I can, 
check and select my repository by. Uh, I can see the content types. It this, for example, Combase uh, index standard office documents, software applications, scientific and statistical data formats. The other index is plain text, structured text, software images, etc., uh, and so on. Uh, there are affiliated countries. Uh, sometimes the data repositories are part of a larger infrastructure, a larger research infrastructure. Uh, like for uh, for example, I, I, I guess yes. So Sea Data Net is part of Pan European Infrastructure for Ocean and Marine Data Management, for example. So uh, it it um, it is for use by not only Greek, let's say, researchers, but uh, all the the rest. Um, countries of the region, class Russian Federation for some reason now I don't know. Um, then you can also uh, check the brief description about this uh, uh, data repository here. And another interesting thing, apart from the filtering, is these uh, little icons uh, on the on the um, right hand side uh, up on the on the record. So there are icons to help you uh, get uh, more insight of uh, other internal processes and policies that are in place in the repository. Like if the repository provides uh, additional information about the service uh, so that it helps you with your data management plan to know how many times uh, your uh, data are backed up, uh, how, for how long they are retained and so on. Uh, so, so you have, so you can check uh, the, these policies. It has this information for you. If the research data repository provides restricted access to its data, uh, it also uh, has this option. It, you see, it's um, it's uh, it's orange. If it was gray like this too, this means that it's not applicable. But whatever is with a, a font like a, a vibrant color. Uh, it's, it means that it's applicable, so it, it, it has, uh, you, have, you can have the possibility to have restricted content in it. Uh, and the terms and the official licenses of the data are provided by the research data repository, so you can check them. Uh, plus, what, what, another thing that is provided for this specific repository is a policy, where you can also, um, you, you can also uh, go to, to check uh, things. What is not provided is that uh, it doesn't have a persistent identifier system, so your data will not uh, get a, a DOI or any other uh, identifiers as we saw uh, during the, the session three. And uh, the data, this, this research data repository is neither certified nor supports a, a repository standard. So, these are, again, very useful to check before uh, selecting your repository as it will um, raise the fairness of your data, uh, of how your data will be, how fair your data will be uh, at the end um, when you publish them. Okay, so uh, enough for me. Uh, I think that it's now your turn to explore and find a repository for your data. I don't know if, uh, Emma, did you have the time to uh, maybe add this? Ah, <laughs> you're amazing. Yes, you had the time to do it. Okay, so you can follow uh, the link that Emma shared in the chat and um, find the repository uh, to add your data and raise your hand so we can... Um, so you can let us know and you can share your experience by uh, trying to select the proper uh, repository for you. Just a couple minutes, like two minutes for that. Try to think if you already have a data set that you could uh, upload somewhere. That's a good scenario.
Ali, there is um, a comment uh, ah. in the chat. There are so many repositories that it is hard to choose. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to refine your search. Mm -hmm. What is find out what is the most important uh, criteria that you want to refine your search with for you and what you need and possibly what the research data management policy by your funder or institution needs and refine uh, the search following this criteria. Okay. Give it a one more minute. Please raise your hands if you want to share your screen and share with us your activity in Retreat Data, or if you have anything to say or comment. Refining the search with objective criteria can lead to slightly out of focus repository that might impact publicity. Um, it depends. Would you like to, to, to share with us uh, what you're doing and, and discuss that whilst we're viewing your screen, possibly? Jean? Okay, let me uh, allow you to. Uh, open your mic. Ah, okay. All right. Now you, you can open your mic. No? Yes. Thank uh -huh. you. I'm, I'm sharing my screen now. 
We don't see it. Uh, well, I have so many windows that I have to oh, okay, okay. search for it. Sorry. No worries. Are you seeing my the the, the book that uh, Julia uh, has written? All right. Um, okay. Sorry, it was not the right window. I will try again. Okay, I don't know why it doesn't work. But well, anyway, mm -hmm. while I'm trying to share my screen, I can explain. Uh, I, I'm trying to search a repository to, 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 to deposit the event data set that I was mentioning earlier. Mm -hmm. And then it's quite a specific data set with visual data, like images mm -hmm. and videos. But I can't, I can seem to find the proper data set for uh, like a repository for this and I just typed in like a keyword like that is very generic like computer science mm -hmm. and that leads to many data sets of course and I've tried to refine by countries and uh, keywords and then I led to my experiment that you might be able to see now. Ah let me see because I'm also searching uh, what you're, what, I'm following your uh, steps at the same time. Okay. Yes, my experiment, yes. Were scientists and safe to publish the workflows? Yes, it's for workflows. I assume that this is not what you want, right? You want, Sorry, say again. It's not a workflow what you want to publish, or is it a work? Is it an image of a workflow? Uh, no, to some visual data like uh, images and videos, but in a in a non-standard format mm -hmm. that was acquired with a non-conventional sensor. It's a non-standard file format. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. I see. Well, that's not a problem now. I guess you you have to consider first to convert it to a different format and yeah. then search for a, a repository. But okay, it, it, it doesn't affect uh, this. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it was not very clear. It's not only about the format. It's only, also about the, the sensor, the type of visual sensor. Uh, just like if you, you you had like some infrared image or I don't know satellite imaging or mm -hmm. or medical image, so it's it's a type of sensor that is um, I don't know that is not the same as like a normal photograph or videos. I see. If you click on uh, content types, images, yes, oh, images. So I'm doing a different, I'm following a different path. Um, okay. I'm, I'm starting my search with uh, you know, using the same keywords, computer science, and then I uh, refine by content type images. Yes. So we want the content type to be Im images. And uh, can, can you follow this path uh, instead, like, you know, uh, playing around with the criteria to see but you have to reset this this uh, my experiment first okay. yeah. then okay so you have 175 let me check was it 175 yes now if you refine by content type images since okay. this is the key thing that you're looking for uh and then maybe countries which country is your um uh, with your affiliation? Uh, well, I'm in, I'm in France, and uh, the Chisera, the Chisera project involves some partners in Spain, Greece, and Switzerland as well. Mm -hmm. Check one of those countries, like check France, for example. Uh, okay. Um, uh, 
Bibliotheque virtual human. Okay, the program, the service heritage documents and parses, research association, associating skills in human sciences and computer science. So it, it can be that this uh, is. Yeah, so actually, this is a, a very good example of what I was trying to explain. Like, uh, it's this this might um, have the all the the, cre the criteria objective criteria that I'm looking for, mm -hmm. but the, it doesn't seems to seem to be the the main purpose of this repo uh, that um, seem to mainly deal with humanities and social science. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to express is that if I ever uh, deposit my data set on this, uh, mm -hmm. maybe it will not have the same visibility as if uh, I would, for instance, select some other country, like uh, some, uh, I, I would like to host my data in, in Europe, for instance, mm -hmm. but maybe the, the refree data would lead me to some, some, some repository that wouldn't probably be the best one. I don't know. The, Do you understand my concern? In terms of visibility, you you are saying. Yeah, because uh, like Bibliothèque Virtuelle Humaniste uh, is like a humanist is uh, is exactly the like uh, sorry the, the the subject that was uh, here like humanities and social science. So it, it okay. looks like this repository, like the main target for this repository is for um, like humanities and social science. But of course, it, it also qualifies for image databases, but it's not the main purpose, maybe. It supports, yes. So in that case, you can uh, always deposit uh, your uh, outputs in the Zenodo. Yes. And also, Check what we have uh, in open air, because uh, there it's guaranteed that you that, that, that the repositories will get okay. all these are in, in open air. So I wouldn't I, I wouldn't um, you know be that uh, skeptical about it. I understand that this is the, I, I I agree and I agree I understand I agree that this is more for humanities oriented first. So it seems that it's not for you, that's fine. Uh, you can either, again, refine your search or uh, use the nodo uh, to, to deposit your, your data. Okay. Yeah, that's what I think as well. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, if I may add something here is um, often that uh, specific subjects and data don't find the right repository. Mm -hmm. um, it is um, um, e easier to find uh, a repository for those community that have um, that are um, have a strong uh, uh, collaboration and uh, that uh, they have the need to share their data um, in a proper way. So sometimes uh, for specific data sets and uh, specific community. Um, you will not find us a, a repository, but then you know that uh, Zenodo is is then the right place to put your uh, your results. Yes. Okay. So I will skip Zenodo because I already I, I understand that most of you, if not all of you, uh, have a prior experience to that. But if you if you have any questions while uh, depositing uh, or if you have any questions regarding related identifiers, how you link uh, other uh, deposits that you have in Zenodo uh, with the record that you're uploading now, please uh, let us know uh, offline and, and we, can, we can support you uh, with any, uh, any difficulties that you have. And I want to go uh, to, I want to go to, there are two more tools, I will skip all, all the others that are very important and we, we should all uh, pay attention to before we finish this, uh, this, this module. Uh, one is, uh, okay, we've done everything. How, uh, how fair are we at the end? So we, we attached, uh, you know, we, we gave licenses to our data. We, we assigned uh, the proper metadata, standards, we, we followed uh, all the guidelines that open and fair practices uh, are uh, uh, saying, and how do we know how fair are our data? Uh, it's good if you uh, could follow this link as well. 
yourselves. Let me see. Yes, it's it's in the chat. It's in? Okay, okay, yeah. great. So I will also go there and show you how it works. Uh, let's see. So screen. So this is my tool. Okay. So this is a, this is a tool created by ARDC. Many tools are currently uh, it, it's it's trending. Uh, many tools are uh, trying to develop uh, you know build on some methodologies that are um, out there about fair assessment and measure how fair our data are uh, using uh, different technologies and uh, different uh, work. This is one of them. This was developed by ARDC, the Australian Research Data Commons, and it's a fairly easy one. It doesn't um, it doesn't need you to know um, any technicalities, or it doesn't need you to to uh, know coding, for example, because there are some more technical uh, tools out there that can uh, measure. Um, in a programmatic way, measure fairness. But this is a, a fairly, um, fairly easy and also um, uh, effective, <coughs> efficient. Sorry. All right. So uh, what we need to do is follow similarly to the licensing tool. Follow uh, the the questions, answer the questions, and then we'll see what what changed. Right. Uh, these are the questions. Does the data set for, for findability? Uh, there are four. Uh, first, we have, does the data set have any identifiers assigned? Uh, let's say it's not only yes or no, it's specify also what type of uh, identifier is that. For example, let's say that we have a globally citable and unique identifier like a DOI, right? Uh, and you see that this bar, uh, when it goes at the end, it means that you're 100% fair. So it will start building up until we, we, we see what is the level of fairness that we reached. Uh, is the data set identifier included in all metadata records files describing the data? Um, that do all our metadata include the identifier? Yes, let's say that yes, I, I made sure that in the metadata I include the PID as well. How is the data described with metadata? Brief title and description. Let's, let's say there are, you see there are more uh, detailed answers. There are uh, more uh, brief answers. So according to how we've how we've applied uh, what what we've uh, uh, what are, what practices we've applied uh, during the research data management activities, we select what type of repository or registry is the metadata record in. Uh, let's say that it's in a um, generalist public repository. I uploaded, I uploaded it in Zenodo, which is a generalist public repository. And I'm done with findability. So for accessibility, how accessible is the data? Uh, is it publicly accessible? Is it fully accessible to persons uh, who meet explicitly stated criteria, like for, ethics, uh, for ethical uh, issues and so on? Uh, is it embargoed? Is it access to metadata only? Let's say that it's unspecified conditional access. Uh, is the data available online without requiring specialized protocols or tools once access has been approved? Um, let's say that it's uh, without requiring specialized protocols. Yes, it doesn't require any uh, protocols. Will the metadata record be available even if the data is no longer available? So uh, even if uh, the data uh, retention period and data preservation period ends, will I still be able to find uh, with the metadata record uh, what uh, this data set was about? Yes. Interoperably. What file format is the data available in? Is it in a proprietary, proprietary format, like uh, like it was um, the example of, uh, of of your of your colleague? Uh, 
yes, before. Uh, is it a, in a structured open standard non-machine readable format? Is it in a structured open standard machine readable format? It, it depends what standard, let's say, no, let's use mostly in a proprietary format. What best describes the types of vocabularies, ontologies, tagging schemas used to define the data elements? So what I'm using, uh, the ontologies I'm using the vocabularies are described or not described and how. Uh, let's say that I'm using standardized vocabularies without global identifiers. How is the metadata linked to other data and metadata to enhance content and clearly indicate relationships? There are no links to other metadata. The metadata record includes URI links or metadata is represented in a machine readable format. So let's say that there are no links to other metadata. Reusable. Is there a license? Uh, which of the following best describes the license user tries to attach the data? Is there a license? Is it standard uh, machine readable license like, like Creative Commons? Is it standard text based license? Is it non standard text based license? No license at all? Let's follow this paradigm like for the book. It has no, this has no license. How much provenance information has been captured to facilitate data reuse? Did we make sure that we uh, keep track uh, of, of how data evolved uh, during time after all this processing uh, and the analysis? Uh, and can, can we ensure that we can go back and we can review all the different versions? Um, uh, and go back to the to the raw data to the first set of data. Uh, it's fully recorded in a machine readable format, fully recorded, partially recorded, no provenance information is recorded. Let's say it's fully recorded in a text format. So we see that uh, we we first see uh, according to um, to fair fair metrics that are used uh, for this tool that this findability, in terms of findability, we are, um, is it? We are uh, fairly good. Uh, we are here, the bar is here and then it's here. So I would say like more than 75%. In terms of accessibility, we could have uh, done better. And by, by by, by, by seeing that we understand what we could change uh, in a maybe if we introduce a new version where we change how access is uh, refined, uh, how access is defined in, in, the, in the record, in our data record, because uh, we didn't like it, it's like 20% or something, 30% here. Interoperability again, uh, very low, uh, and the reusability similarly to, to the. the accessibility. So totally, uh, we have uh, less than 50%. We, we are less than 50% fair, which means that we have plenty of room for, um, uh, for um, improvements. Um, I, I won't ask you to go through this now, but it's very good if you do. It's a very good a tool to have to understand how fair your data are. Um, so, but what I want you to do before we end this course is, okay. Oh no, we have two more, sorry. I said two, but it was three. We have very quickly, uh, let's see how you can publish, what are the, the tools that can help you understand if you comply with the publishers, scientific publishers' uh, papers uh, policies. One is this. It's, I will just, let me share my screen again because it, okay. So if we go to share Paromio, it was also mentioned um, in module two. Is there a question? No, it's me uh, linking okay, okay, to okay. Sherpa Romeo. Thank you. So if we go here, we can we can search for a, a journal a title that we want to publish our, 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 our paper. 
And let's say I want, oops, I want to search for ACM, the Journal of Emerging uh, Technologies in Computer Systems. I can see all the basic information like the title, the ISSN. I can uh, go and uh, click here and uh, and check the publisher's website. Who is it published uh, published by the journal? It's uh, by the Association for Computer for Computing Machinery. And there, uh, th this is very useful to know. Uh, th there you see submitted version, accepted version, published version. It shows you here what you can deposit uh, in an open access, following an open access uh, path, an open access route, as Emma has uh, indicated in her course. Uh, and these, these are just uh, different terminologies used to indicate and to note uh, preprints, postprints, and the, the final the, the PDF version. So this is the preprint. That's a the submitted version. The preprint before uh, any changes or any uh, review has been made. The accepted version is with the review, so it's it's considered it's considered as a postprint, and and the published version is uh, the the PDF. So the exact. Um, the exact version that you see on the publisher's website, you can take that, download it uh, directly from the website, and upload it and deposit it in a in a repository to comply with open access uh, uh, policies. So here you can also see what are the different um, what are the other elements that you that you have to have in mind. So if you want to, you are free. First of all, you are free to publish uh, following. All of this, um, uh, all all of these um, different versions. Like you can publish your preprint, and there is no embargo attached to it, so you can immediately provide access to it. You can uh, publish the accepted version of uh, your of your paper, um, and again, uh, there are no. Um, no embargoes uh, attached to it, and you can publish the PDF, uh, the exact PDF, but there you will have to pay uh, in order to have immediate access, to provide immediate access to the paper. And so there is an, a, a cost, uh, we call them uh, article processing charging, an APC cost, uh, which you pay uh, and you, you get to the published uh, version uh, immediate access. Um, Yes, it says the same. Uh, the, the 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 license that you can have uh, that is attached to, to your published version is CC BY. Uh, so these are these are very useful information. You can check that again. These are very useful information that you should know uh, before uh, publishing before publishing your paper. Uh, and after, so that you cross-check with what your funder or your institution wants you and uh, guide your selection to where you can publish. Because if, if the publisher that you want, does that, that you have in mind, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't satisfy uh, open access needs, and your funder, for example, do want you to publish uh, open access papers, then the paper that you will uh, end up publishing in a non-open access uh, journal, it won't be counted in the reporting. Uh, so th these are things that you have to have in mind. Um, yes, how to comply uh, for both the funder and, and, the, and um, the, the publisher on the publisher, following the publisher policies. Uh, if you publish on, on that particular uh, journal. I don't know if uh, Emma wants to add anything on that before I move on to the next. No. Okay, great. So, you know, so what I can say while you move to the next uh, um, is that uh, if you have any problems and uh, you're not sure about the policy, then you can refer to us um, or your uh, your NOAD, because Open Air has NOAD in every country, so you can find the list in uh, our website, so you can refer to them uh, or to, to me or Ali for any problems you have or support. Of course, yes. If you have doubts, yes, please do. 
and now I, I uh, added here the test area of uh, of Argos, where we keep uh, where, when, what the environment where we test new things before we push them to the production. Uh, before we push them to Argos that, that, that you see here. And the reason why I've added that here to you, and this is only for and solely for the purpose of this uh, course, um, you, you, it's, it's useless uh, otherwise for you because um, you won't need it. You will need argos.opener.eu from January. Uh, to to use in order to create your data management plan for following the Chistera template. Uh, the reason why I've added that here, the developer side, is because I would like you to. Can you see my presentation? We no. see Argos. No. Okay. Stop. Seeing. Answer. Okay, because I would like you to go to uh, the, the link, follow the link that I added in the chat and follow, like do, do the following. First, start the DMP, create a DMP and share it with a colleague, add, add, add their email uh, and send the invitation to, to your colleague and raise your hand when you're done so you can uh, let us know and show us uh, that you, you have received, you know, my colleague has received this um, email and now I have access to, to, to his, her DMP. And the second one is complete a, se a section of the GIST era template and then again, raise your hand and show us uh, exactly what you did. And uh, then the third one is find the data set from uh, Explore, the Opener Explore and describe it in the GIST era template. Um, do, do, do we need, I guess we need, it would have been easier if we were uh, not online, but face to face, of course, then we could allocate people like, you know, split people to groups. Uh, but uh, Emma, can we do that um, like deliberately, uh, like, you know, uh, arrange groups, say that those people that we see first uh, work together, well, not together, but you know, work on the first, mm -hmm. few people work on the second, okay. So in the attendees, I will take it as I see it, you know, alphabetically, I guess it's-, it's uh, Yes, it's alphabetically. So, so the first, we, we are 16. So the first um, five, six people from Alba, Alexis, Anyana, Aris, Dimitris, uh, and Adina, so these people can start the DMP and share it with each other. I'm I'm not sure they have their uh, emails though. Uh, ah, I see. yeah. So that could be a problem. Mm. So can people that work together uh, <laughs> raise their hands or let us know in the chat uh, who who can do that who can do the first uh, exercise? Yeah, we could maybe have a, a volunteer and then uh, he or she can share with us. Ellie, we can give our, our email and then uh, maybe- it's, Oh, they uh, don't yeah. even see the participants. Oh, because. yeah, they don't see the participants because I'm we are sorry. in webinar I'm mode. Not, yeah, okay, I, I, okay. I think uh, maybe because we are also uh, running out of time. So maybe if we have a, a volunteer and then uh, we make them- uh, he mm -hmm. can Okay, Jean can volunteer, yes. He is already in the uh, in the speaker list, so Jana, you can already share your screen, and maybe you can um, you can also ah, okay. use uh, our email. Uh, I can copy and paste my email or Ellie uh, emails. Um, so I believe Ellie, we need uh, the email for for our open air um, account or. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, I'm sharing that one. Okay, so if yeah, you can use the Ali email, Jean. Yes. So you can. If uh, you yeah. want to share your screen and go through the the steps, so that you you send me uh, your your. Yeah, this is actually uh, the the. Um, uh, this uh, last demo session is is always uh, funnier when we are. 
Yeah, uh, person, <laughs> it's not that easy to plan in online remote. Okay, yes, we see your screen. We don't hear you if you're speaking. Yeah, sorry, I was speaking, yes, but okay. I would... Good. Now, now we hear you. Okay, yes. So now I guess you, you're going to provide a title, yes. <laughs> Micro identity, yes. The description, the language. Okay. Okay. So here I should. Uh, did, did you buy, paste your email address in the chat? No. Or, uh, this is, uh, this uh, is I'm sorry, for... What, what, what email address should I use then? This field is to add colleagues that have been working with you for this DMP and the data and with the data sets. Okay. The data. So you can search for colleagues like... Uh, Yes. Um, okay, the list is long. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then, yes, if you couldn't find it, you could insert it manually. That's fine. Organization, you can search for your organization. Um, or where your colleagues work. Yes, okay. And then you are the contact for this DMP in the future. If we if we have any, uh, you know, questions, follow up questions. Okay. Okay. The founder. Uh, sorry, I should go to the next section. Yes. Uh, the founder. Founder, we want uh, just error, right? Uh, it's not there yet, so you have to create it. But from January, it will be there. It will be listed. Uh, we're working with Chistera to do exactly this. Can so, I just write it? No. Oh, insert, yes, exactly. Okay. The grants. Um, here I guess you can search for the grants uh, or insert like yeah, maybe a grant in mind Sorry? yes ins insert it insert the uh, since this is fictional let's insert this like this okay. uh, and project not found Okay. It says the field is to be completed only for projects for multiple grant supply. Is it multiple grants? No, it's just a sing single grant. Then you don't need to. Do I need to fill in this? The field is to be completed only for projects for multiple grant supply. So you don't, okay. if, if you don't have multiple grants, then you're fine. Okay. The license okay. the DMP should get. So here, um, you can also search. Okay. Um, academic free license. Okay. If you want to search, yes. And now we want just error, the, the template that we want to use. Okay. Uh, so this exists, right? There, yes. And then, should I save? Uh, save and that data set, or you can just save it. Okay. You have two options. Okay, let's start. Uh, okay, we don't. I don't want you to go through the data. If you go to my DMPs, uh, yes. Yes, then you will see it in your dashboard. See, yes, okay. in the dashboard. And uh, I want you to send it to, to like share this idea with me. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, so export invite, right? Mm -hmm. And 
you can cop copy my, uh, it's in the chat. Oh, it's in the chat, okay. Click enter. Oh. Great. Now let's see. Oh, it's it's at Athena RC, right? Okay. Uh, what you hear is this. So I received. Okay. Yes. Let me share my screen now. Thank you very much. Yes. And you can see um, that I received it and there I can join this, um, this DMP. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Ah, okay, okay, sorry. And then I can, I can, uh, I can join this DMP. Okay. Why I'm not going to uh, do it now, and I have access to to this DMP that you are. Um, I can I can view that, and I can work with you on the DMP. So uh, quickly because we have to go to the next one. Uh, do you, no, you don't see my screen. I have to share it again. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the second one is uh, this complete a section of the GIST era template. Uh, just uh, create the DMP and start uh, cre creating a data set and just randomly select a section that you want to, to, to write on, on the DMP that you will create. Do we have volunteers because we, we have already um, we, we are over time maybe we have volunteers who could do that participants um, someone that has not spoken yet maybe I have to leave thank you for all the sessions <laughs> okay thank you okay I understand that uh, yes but it, will, it, it will be very quickly and easy so if we have a volunteer we saw how this can be done in the, the in the previous course Maybe you can ask Jean if he is so. Yeah, yeah I'm still here. Yeah, <laughs> he's I still there. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> Since we have you, okay. <laughs> we volunteer you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. So shall I sh share? Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Again. Then... Okay. So I'm still with the same great DMP. Perfect. Which you can, uh, we want you to add it to, to, to describe a data set for this DMP. These are the public data sets. Oh, these are the public. So, uh, so can, I, can I use a fake one? Like I don't have a data set to describe. No, this. yes, don't worry, don't oh, worry. Okay. Uh, select okay, so title. Mm. Okay. And 
I, I would can I suggest that we go to the the last no no the, go to the last uh, section. Ah, okay, yes, maybe that's better. Yeah, like uh, the no, like the the wrong uh, position last. Oh, um, yes. Sorry, the reusable data. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. How will they? How will existing data be reused? So, how are you planning to reuse this data in the context of your research? Compare. Mm -hmm. um, okay, if, if if you know the URL of the DMP where these data are described, you could add it. Well, I don't know. Don't uh, worry. We have. So where can we be found? So you can search for a, a repository, maybe HAL. Yes. Uh, HAL, we have many HAL here. Do we have a HAL? University Delhi. Yes, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. Which data will be reused? So if you knew the data, maybe you can quickly uh, open a tab uh, in Explore and search for a data set and then we can add it here. Um, Explore.opener.eu. Yes. Okay. So um, uh, Search so. for it. Yeah. Oh, but I'm sorry. No worries. Okay, we want the data set, right? Remember that. Okay. Uh, research. Okay, yes. Ah, there's audiovisual also. Sorry, where do you see audiovisual? Uh, it's the second one, audiovisual. All right, sorry, I was looking on the, on the left hand side. So this... Um... If you open it. Okay. The, if you if you click on the DOI, no, no. If you click okay. on the DOI, okay. Okay, it seems like is it a data set? I don't understand. It seems like it's a poster, but that's all right. If you if you go back to explore and copy paste the title of this uh, the title. Uh... Yes, that one. This one? Yes. Okay. And paste it, yes, there. Yes, that's the one. Computer oh. introduction to computer science. Yeah, was it not this one like uh, computers? Ah, computer science and toxicology. Which one was it? And toxicology, yes, it was the second one. Okay, yes, you're right. Um, but if you knew the data set, the, the, exactly the, the, the correct, so it was yours or someone you knew, you could, you could avoid going to explore, you could directly search here, right? Okay. Uh, and then state any constraints on reuse of existing data if there are any. Mm. So mm. we assume that you would check this data. Okay, so uh, I could check with uh, can I check here and explore? Uh, you have to get the full text uh, to, in order to, to check thing. Yes, the full text. Because this, the, there you have more information. So here we have the license. CC0, perfect. So there is no constraint, right? There is no constraint, yes, perfect. Uh, sorry, we were here. So the reason it, it the reuse of it in season. Okay. So here oh, we you didn't write no. Oh, okay, yes. You could write if, if you wanted just to, to 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 say in a sentence no constraints because of CC by 
Yes, exactly. So okay. just state the reasons if the use of any existing data sources has been considered by discarded. Uh, let's say that no. Okay. And that's it. Completed for the section. Okay. So shall I save? Oh, so yes, you can. You can. You can save it. You can save it. And then you can continue work. If you save and close, then you will uh, go, yes, you will go to your dashboard. Okay. To, to the, sorry, to the whole BNP. Okay. So, um, any, uh, any questions also from your side? Was it, was something confusing uh, while, while um, following this? Uh, process uh, well from my side it, it was very nice to to do it online so I, as i we would do it like if if it was face to face mm -hmm. and uh, so maybe I, I would encourage the other participants to do so now yeah that would be good um, anyone who would like to quickly go through the steps or has any questions that would like to uh, to uh, open uh, the floor, no, is open. Okay, but if you do have what when you will uh, start playing with argos.opener.eu in January, we will let you know when uh, everything will be set in our production. Um, we're happy to to answer any questions and to support you, as Emma already mentioned, support you in any of your endeavors regarding uh, um, open, following and integrating open and fair principles. Also, Manolius about amnesia. Uh, if if you have uh, questions uh, about uh, key anonymity uh, and method for amnesia or amnesia um, workflows. Uh, we are here to to help. Okay, I think we can um, conclude, or we can actually end it. Uh, Ahmad, would you like to uh, say anything? Uh, yeah, if I may add a, a few words. Uh, <laughs> let me just quickly share my screen. All right. So first of all, I want to really thank you a lot, uh, Ellie, Emma, and uh, all the open air team for having organized such a great uh, training sessions, training courses uh, for uh, for researchers, actually for us as well. Uh, it was very beneficial, very clear, and, um, and very interactive. Thanks a lot for all your efforts. Thanks a lot for all the participants who have really constantly, from what I've seen, participated from the first almost to the last session. Um, I hope it was very beneficial for them and that they will be able to, uh, to use the tools efficiently and help us also improve them uh, because I think we will, uh, we will thrive as, as well constantly to improve the tools and the processes in terms of open science. So obviously any feedback throughout uh, the lifetime management of the project is welcome. Um, so uh, quickly, uh, yes. So quickly speaking, we've, uh, we all know now why open science is nice. Uh, what are the different possibilities, the different roads to open access uh, of pub to publications, what are the main issues related to data sharing, and as well as the main tools and resources at the disposal of the researchers, um, in particular, uh, thanks to, to open air. <clears throat> so overall, we've seen a very nice modern approach to open science and a very flexible one. Uh, from our side, from Chistera, we've taken a lot of measures. First of all, we will grant all CSER projects, not just the new ones, unique identifiers in such a way uh, that it will be very easy for them to monitor all the, the outputs related to their projects. This will happen very soon. Uh, we encourage a lot the use of the, the tools we've seen today and as well as all the good practices. 
uh, we will prepare obviously a lot of guidelines uh, in the near future and keep optimizing the tools and the guidelines thanks to all the feedbacks that we will get. And obviously the most important thing is the implementation of this new multilateral open science policy for the call 2020, which is actually already online. So on, on the website of Gistera, we can already see the pre-announcement uh, with uh, parts of the, of the open science policy. But obviously this, this can apply to all uh, ongoing projects, which are all invited to follow the same good practices. And again, roughly speaking, all publication open access without embargo and underlying uh, generated data openly available following the fair data principles on fair enabling data repositories. Uh, together with the assignment of this new role of open science coordinator, uh, whose role obviously is to monitor the implementation of uh, the right dissemination activities in within the projects as well as the planning of the open science activities and the the as well as the dmp uh, we are again as uh, this have said already uh, very much committed to the transparencies of our own processes in chistera we've signed the dora declaration and will keep improving our procedures throughout so thanks again uh, if you have any questions now later throughout your projects related to open science feel free to contact me or to contact directly your national contact point and we're happy to guide you and accompany you in all the efforts and support you would need thank you again and have a nice weekend and lovely uh, and uh, end of a year even though in very special circumstances thank you Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ahmad.